Hello and welcome to a short and snappy video on how to improve and optimize your sleep. I'm Connor Myler, a health and fitness coach, nutritionist, and I've been working within the health and fitness industry for well over a decade now. I do not claim to be a sleep expert by any means, but I have worked with hundreds of busy professionals who really struggle to get a good night's sleep. And these are the five or six key areas that I find have really helped those people. This is going to be a straightforward, no nonsense approach to improving your sleep quality. No nonsense, no higgledy piggledy BS, just an evidence-based approach to improving your sleep. I think it's fair to say we all know better sleep equals better life. Quality sleep is absolutely paramount for daily performance, for energy, and for longevity as well. A couple of key areas that you may or may not know about. If you're sleeping well, you're going to have a better mood, higher libido, more energy, faster decision-making skills, and better decision-making skills, lower blood pressure, stabilized blood sugars, you'll have more muscle mass, and you'll have lower levels of body fat. And as a busy professional, better sleep improves every aspect of your life, both business and personal but how do we actually improve it? Number one, the most common issue I see with busy professionals when trying to fall asleep or because they're waking up between two and four or 5 a.m. racing thoughts, is that you are not creating time for yourself. You're not creating space in your week to actually sit down and explore your own personal anxieties and desires. You might have an extremely busy day at work looking after everybody else around you. You get home, have your dinner with the family, sit down, watch some TV, and then you jump into bed as soon as your head hits the pillow, boom all the thoughts come racing in. And that's generally because you haven't given yourself space in the day or in the week to actually explore those personal desires and anxieties that you may be facing. If you struggle to fall asleep, you're wired and tired at night, or you're waking up between two and five in the morning with racing thoughts, I highly suggest that you carve out some time in your diary to get pen to paper. Whether it's around work or it's personal, whatever it may be, get a pen to paper and get it out of your head. Now, I know for some that might come across as a little bit higgledy-piggledy, but Honestly, this is the biggest issue I see working with busy professionals who struggle to fall and stay asleep throughout the night. Number two, create a structured sleep routine. Going to bed at the same time every night and waking up at the same time every morning is one of the best things that you can do to improve your sleep quality. Why? Because a consistent sleep pattern regulates hormones that make you want to fall asleep and want to wake up in the morning, particularly melatonin and cortisol. And if you go to bed at say 10 p.m. one night and then 12 o'clock the next night, your body is not aligned. It doesn't know when to release that melatonin. It doesn't know when to release that cortisol. Quite similarly to if you have jet lag, you fly across the world, you're all messed up for a couple of days. Yes, it's not to the same extent, but it does make quite a substantial difference. So the first thing you want to do is figure out how many hours you actually strive off. Is it seven? Is it eight? Is it nine? Set your sleep time, set your wake time and stay consistent with it. Give your body a chance to adapt. Now from here, I would recommend having a sleep clock. We all have an alarm clock to wake us up in the morning, but very few of us have a clock that actually sets us off and reminds us, right, you're going to bed in the next hour, get your shit in order and get ready to go to sleep. And that is the period of time you're going to spend trying to get back into an alpha brainwave state. Nice and relaxed, that's when you're feeling good, sleepy, drowsy, ready to nod off and get a good night's sleep. A really good way of inducing this alpha brainwave state is something like some casual reading, nothing too exciting, no Fifty Shades or anything like that, listening to calming music or downloading the Headspace app. Whatever it may be, grey noise, pink noise, whatever you like, that gets you into a nice relaxed state. If you don't currently have a sleep routine and you're going to bed when you like, waking up when you like, I do suggest you really, really prioritize this. It's as important as getting your seven to nine hours. You might feel a little bit crappy getting up the first couple of mornings, but after four, five, no more than seven days, you'll feel so much better getting up. You'll have much better energy levels throughout the day. You feel sharp in the morning. And most importantly, you'll actually feel sleepy and tired when you should in the evening time. Next, you want to remove blue light before bed. TVs, phones, laptops, computer screens, harsh down lights, try to get rid of them all one to two hours before bed. Why? Because that blue light interferes with your body's natural production of melatonin, which makes it very hard to actually fall asleep in the evening. Now, I know a lot of us like to sit down late at night, watch some TV. If you're not going to turn the TV off or at least turn down the brightness substantially, or you need to work late in the evenings, you can pick up blue light blocking glasses. Now these blue light blocking glasses, just throw them on like any other normal glasses, you can buy them anywhere, Amazon is a good place. They go from dark amber to basically see-through. The darker they are, the more blue light you are going to block. Now, I'm not gonna say it's a cop-out, but it is like putting a plaster on an open wound. Try to get into the habit of turning off your electrical devices at least an hour before bed. Not even just because of the blue light. If you're working late into the night, and then jumping into bed, you're bringing that stress into bed with you. If you're watching TV or scrolling on your phone, you're getting quick hits of dopamine, and that doesn't make your body want to get into that deep restful state. Now, I know most of us are absolutely glued to these devices, but I do urge you create that boundary for yourself. 
because it will go a long way in helping your sleep quality. Number four, get outside as early as you can in the morning. Why? Because you want the natural sun rays to hit the back of your eyes and set your body's internal clock. You'll feel much more alert, you'll have more energy throughout the day, and it's like setting an alarm clock for your body to want to feel sleepy and tired later in the evening. Now, if you're from Ireland or the UK, don't get a whole lot of sunshine, but it doesn't matter. Even cloud cover is totally fine. Now, plenty of ways you can go about it. You can obviously bring your coffee outside in the morning, just walk around the garden, walk around the block or bring the dog for a walk, sure they love it. Cycle to work, that's an option. Park further away from the office and walk the rest of the way are all deadly options to go for. Eat and drink at the right times. As a busy professional, it's very easy to go the whole day without eating, come home, ravage the cupboards, eat a dinner that's twice as big as you should be eating. What happens then? You have very poor sleep quality because your body is half digesting the food, half asleep, you feel crap in the morning. It's not a good way to go about things. Put a hard and fast rule that you're not going to eat two hours before bedtime and if you have to, something that's extremely light. When you're in bed, you should be sleeping, not digesting food. And if it is the case that you eat late at night, when you're in bed, you're actually not digesting it very well either. Drinks. Alcohol consumption is an absolute killer for quality sleep. I'm sure you've had a good old night out. Maybe you even slept 10 hours that night. But you wake up and you feel like dog shit. That is because you do not get any deep sleep or REM sleep throughout the night because your body is busy metabolizing the toxin, which is alcohol. When it comes to caffeine, coffee, big coffee drinker myself, I'm on my number three today. I'm not going to tell you to cut out caffeine. Caffeine is amazing, wonder drug. But make it a hard and fast rule to cut out caffeine after 1 p.m. Why? Because caffeine has a half-life of about seven hours. And the best way of thinking about this is if you have a double espresso at 1 p.m., seven hours later, you have half of that caffeine in your system. And you wouldn't drink one espresso at 8 p.m., I'd like to think. So you have to be very, very careful when consuming caffeine because it builds up over the day and it takes a very long time to metabolize. And if you're somebody who could have a coffee at 10 p.m. and still go to sleep at 11 p.m., it doesn't mean that you should. Just because you can fall asleep, it doesn't mean you're getting deep restorative sleep. And you may notice that yourself because the next day you wake up and the first thing you go for is another coffee. You know, the way I think about it is in the morning, yeah, coffee is great. But if you plugged your phone in at night and you woke up the next day and it was at 60%, you would be bringing it into the shop to get the battery replaced. So yes, a coffee is great in the morning, but if you feel like you need it to get going, you're probably not doing something right the night beforehand. And last slide, bonus tips, supplementation and smart tech. You could consider supplementing with magnesium before bed. Now, the research on magnesium and improving sleep isn't that great unless somebody is magnesium deficient. But anecdotally, both personally and with hundreds of clients that I've worked with, I have found magnesium to still be an extremely beneficial supplement to promote relaxation and good quality sleep, placebo or not. Potentially consider purchasing a sleep tracking device like an Apple Watch, a Whoop Band, a Fitbit, or this fellow here, an Aura Ring. Now I say potentially because it works really well for some people and it does the polar opposite for others. If you're somebody who is going to depend on the smart tech to tell you how you feel and it dictates your emotions, don't do it. But if you're somebody who loves metrics and loves stats, being able to tangibly see your progress or your hiccups along the way, whether you ate too late at night, went out for a few drinks, seeing that data come through on an app on your phone, for a lot of people, is just a massive drive and incentive to keep pushing forward and progressing and improving your sleep quality. Now you may ask, which sleep tracking device is best? The Apple Watch, Fitbit, Whoop Band, Aura Ring? Well, they're all going to have pros and cons. I absolutely love this Aura Ring. It's out of the way, it's battery life is five to seven days. I don't like wearing something on my wrist to bed. The app and interface it comes with is absolutely fantastic. It really helps you to identify where you're messing up and where you can improve. And uh, I'm not sponsored by the way, but I can safely say with this fella, I invested in about one year ago now, and I can say it's single-handedly the best piece of tech I have ever bought to help me improve my sleep. You might prefer an Apple Watch or a Whoop Band or the Aura Ring might be right up your street. It is absolutely not essential, but it's something to consider if you really want to invest in a product and kickstart your interest in improving your sleep for sure. And lastly, I just want to say thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it beneficial. And if you have any questions or queries, not only around sleep, but training, nutrition, lifestyle, supplementation, digestion, or stress management, please feel free to drop me a message at any time. No question too big or too small. Have a fantastic day and best of luck optimizing your sleep.